often hear about pH, but what is it really? It's the measurement of how acidic or alkaline a solution is. And this is important for a lot of different reasons. In water gardens, it can affect the health of our fish. In our own bodies, it can affect our health as well. Typically, you see pH referred to as a number from 0 to 14. 0 being the most acidic, like battery acid. 1 is a little less acidic, but it's still considered an acid, and this would include your stomach acids. 2 is lemon juice. And 3, we've all heard about the corrosive nature of soda pop. 4 is tomato juice. 5 is black coffee. And 6 is plain old milk. Also at 6 is your own human saliva. Now at 7, this is the halfway point between 0 and 14. And this is the sweet spot for a garden and a lot of different things. This is where pure water resides and also our human blood. At 8, we have egg whites. And these are transitioning more into alkaline solutions. At 9, we have baking soda. And 10, we have milk of magnesia, which is an antacid. So we often take this to help balance the stomach acids. At 11, we have ammonia that's used for cleaning. As well as 12, we have soapy water. 13, we have a lot of our bleaches. And then finally, some of our most corrosive bases is our drain cleaners at 14. So what does all of this have to do with gardening? Well, just like our own bodies can get upset when our pH is off, so can our plants in our garden. So for more information, we're going to go talk to the expert. Dr. Zhang, thank you for joining us again. Um, we're going to talk about pH. Can you explain a little bit of the science behind pH? Well, I'll be happy to. pH is one of the most important tests in the routine uh, package we talked about the last time. So pH basically is measuring the soil acidity or alkalinity in the soil. It's very important. It's just like our blood pressure. We, it can't be too high or too low. Basically, the acidity is the hydrogen ion in the soil, mm -hmm. okay? It's very low, typically it's like zero, 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 one molar, right? Okay. Or 10 to the minus seven. That's how low it is. Well, it's very tedious to write all this amount. So people use the simple negative log to express that, that word uh, equals seven. So they p put a pH there, pH seven. This is how pH is expressed. Okay. In the laboratory, we do all this conversion. We tell you your soil pH is. Okay, so, so you give us whole numbers to work with. <laughs> yes, it typically it range from zero to 14. However, most plants like the neutral range, 6.5 to seven. Right. If the pH is too low, you have a very serious problem. When it's too high, some of the nutrients are not available to plants. They're like uh, rocks precipitate in the soil. This is why we like homeowners to pay attention to pH. If there's a problem, we can correct the pH using the products we, uh, available to us. Well, and I think what you said about uh, nutrients being tied up is kind of an important thing because a lot of times we don't realize that we might be fertilizing, but it might not be accessible to the plant if your pH is off. Uh, you are exactly right. You know, some of the nutrients like iron, zinc, those are micronutrients. When the pH is about eight or seven and a half, they become solids. Mm -hmm. So that's why we see iron chlorosis and other problems. A lot of our pin oaks have that problem. Exactly. So if we find out uh, we have a low pH, what do we need to do? We need to add some lime? Well, lime is a caustic material. It brings us a pH up or neutralize soil acidity. Okay. So if a soil has a pH like five, which is low to most plants, then we add agricultural lime to neutralize it. Well, how much to apply? First of all, it depends on soil pH. Mm -hmm. That's why people need to do a soil test. And that's then, on your basic soil test, your yes. routine soil test. Mm -hmm. Then you find the product. The product will tell you the purity of this. This is like 86%. Uh, if you need a 10 pounds, you need a little bit more than 10 pounds to supply the 
uh, needed active ingredient. Okay. Okay. So you now, would calculate this the same way you would calculate your nitrogen needs. And things yes. Like that. You, people can go to the garden center, find uh, this is a palletized line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, w what is a good time to apply? Typically, it's in the fall. It takes time for the lime to react with the soil to raise the pH. So by the time you do a spring planting, the soil pH should be neutralized uh, to the right range. So if people follow our recommendation, uh, it's very easy to get the pH corrected. And then we've got some sulfur here, which is what you would put down if your pH was too high. Exactly. Most plants can tolerate a wide range of pH, but some plants like azalea or blueberry, mm -hmm. they can grow at normal pH like 6 or 7, but they just don't bear fruits very well. So in that case, for a serious gardener, they would like to lower the pH or add acidity to the soil. There are several products available. Uh, like alum, it's aluminum sulfate people can use to acidify the soil. Mm -hmm. But most common is this sulfur. After we put in the soil, the microorganism will oxidize to sulfuric acid. This is how to add acid to the soil to neutralize the alkalinity. Like this one has 90% of uh, sulfur in this uh, product. Mm -hmm. It's very effective. The, you want to make sure to water these in, correct? Yes. Uh, this can add it uh, ahead of time. It reacts with the soil very slowly, so you need to be very patient. Uh, there's a fact sheet, I think the title is uh, Improve Garden Soils, has uh, instruction how much to apply. Typically, just uh, two to three pounds per 100 square foot. Okay. But people need to analyze the soil probably frequently uh, to check to see the pH level. Right. Some of the fertilizers, like this one is labeled for azalea, mm -hmm. also good for blueberry. Yeah. The reason for that is it, does, it contains not only the nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, it also contains 5% of sulfur. Okay. This sulfur would uh, act to neutralize alkalinity like this pure sulfate compound. This might be something if you just need to slightly adjust your pH lower, whereas if your pH is more alkaline and you need to go a more drastically, then you can use Right, the like these plants like pH about five. Mm -hmm. If you have a pH at eight right now, it will take uh, quite a bit of sulfur to do that. And this one is going to not going to do the job very quickly. But if you have a pH is 5.5, already close to the target level, this may be very helpful. Okay. Dr. Zhang, a lot of people think you can add gypsum to your soil to help loosen the clay. And there's a little asterisk on this package. Can you kind of explain really what the role is of gypsum in the soil? Well, this is another myth. You know, gypsum is calcium sulfate. When you apply this, it does add calcium and some sulfate to the soil. However, the solubility of this one is very low. That means it does not dissolve in water very well. So if you have a normal soil, this would not help very much at all. However, if you have an alkali soil, that means the soil has lots of sodium, high pH. This calcium will replace sodium to flocculate soil particle and then improve the water infiltration, also lower the soil pH. So in that case, gypsum is helpful. We have soil tests available uh, to help uh, homeowners identify if you have an alkali soil or not. Okay. Otherwise, it's not going to very help. So really, the take home is gypsum only helps if you have an alkaline soil. You're right. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.